What's up guys? This is Trilogy here with Trilogy Effect. Today we're going to be doing a spoiler filled review of the Justice League Snyder Cut. I just spent the last four hours watching this movie. I have a watch party tomorrow actually with a group of friends, but I went ahead and watched it by myself uh, because I want to make this video as soon as possible. It's already saturated, but I want to get my thoughts and opinions out there for my subscribers who want to watch this kind of content. Um, I've seen people who have done reviews on this and the movie wasn't even out yet. So I'm like, ah, I'm really going to be behind once this walk comes out. But yes, I want to talk about this four hour movie. This movie, no boost, no cap. This movie is my new favorite DCEU movie. I hope it erases everything that they've done so far. And I'm going to get into what I'm talking about. But first off, I want to introduce myself. Like I said, I'm Trilogy with Trilogy Effect. Your spot, if you want to see more things about DC, Marvel, comic books, anime, technology, anything, well not anything, most things I talk about, I have a whole array of content for you guys, if you want to check my backlog, if you like Dungeons and Dragons, if you like board games, card games, I do videos over pretty much everything, um, history, um, I just have a lot of interest and I make videos on a lot of different content, so I promise you, if you take a second to look at my channel, you'll find something that interests you, and if you want to see more of something specific, feel free to let me know, because I'm, my eyes, my ears are wide open, I respond to every comment on my channel, as long as it's not like spam, I don't answer those those spam comments but if you want to give me your opinion on the movie or any other thoughts or anything at all feel free to comment down below and I'll get back back to you now talking about the Snyder Cut of 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 Justice League this movie <laughs> right off the bat I noticed a major difference with Steppenwolf this man he was beefier he was more dominating he, he had a whole different sense of dread compared to the cheesy Steppenwolf from the 2017 Justice League that guy was a pushover and I mean, he was just kicking butt. Like I was watching him bulldozer over a horse. He picked up a horse, he threw it with like two women on it. I was like, geez, who is this guy? This is not the Stephen Wolf from Justice League 2017. Not at all. This is, he's built different in this movie. Like he's highly intimidating, which like seeing that, what makes me only fear more for when Darkseid comes into the picture, because like Stephen Wolf was just bending over to Darkseid, and Stephen Wolf was whooping everybody in the Justice League. Like he would beat everybody. Then we didn't stand a chance until Superman showed up. So the fact that Darkseid is stronger than Stephen Wolf is highly, highly frightening. Like we didn't see much of his ability, but the fact that he's stronger than Stephen Wolf, and Stephen Wolf was beefy in this movie. Like he was. It was crazy. It was crazy how strong Stephen Wolf was in this movie. And I really thought that made the movie so much better. We actually felt worried for the characters. Although the end plot is very similar to the original Justice League 2017, I tried to suspense my belief on, and I didn't want to meta watch it because I knew how the movie ended in 2017. And I knew this movie may be a little different, but it was probably going to end the same here too. But n disregarding that, it made Stephen Wolf so much better as a villain. He's not like a Marvel level villain or anything like that. He's still, <laughs> I mean, he didn't really even have his own goals, but the fact that we got a little bit more backstory about him, his betrayal, his redemption, he wanted to get back on Darkseid's good side. And I didn't, I don't know if I didn't catch it, but I don't remember if they mentioned how he specifically betrayed Darkseid. I don't remember them saying that. But maybe that's something they'll touch up on in the future movies. It was a four hour movie. They might not have had time to address that. Um, but everything that they added, I loved. I feel like there was nothing unnecessary added to the movie. And the fact that they chopped all of this content out is amazing because there's so much that we missed out on based off of what they put in this movie and what we got in 2017. I loved the, the way the movie started. I know 2017, they started with that weird interview with Henry Cavill's lip and stuff like that, and they asked him what the symbol meant and everything like that. I like the entry of this movie a little bit better. It ends with the um, the um, Doomsday battle where Superman died. I loved how the sound waves echoed out from Superman, and it transitioned to different locations. So we saw the sound waves here in Atlantis. We saw the sound waves here. We saw the sound waves here. We even saw it in Cyclops. Like, they transitioned into Cyclops, and I loved how they transition from scene to scene. A little bit of the 2017 release, things would just jump around. We're like, okay, all of a sudden we're at the bottom of the Gotham Harbor. All of a sudden we're here, all of a sudden we're here. 
there wasn't any justification on why we were switching locations so fast and so swiftly. Whereas everything in this movie, whenever we switch locations, there was kind of an explanation. I'm not gonna say they like, they overtold instead of, you know, they have show, don't tell. Um, I don't wanna say they overtold us, but they gave us the right amount of dialogue to explain why we were moving from this location to the next location. I also love the Amazons, like, there were some, I don't know if I didn't notice it in 2017, but some of those Amazons, boy, they were beefy, they had six packs. I love a buff woman, honestly, but those Amazons, I really noticed how buff they were, like, they were just built, like, jeez. Um, but, like, regardless of that, Stefan will still beat them up, he still destroyed their island. We knew that was gonna happen, we saw the 2017, but I don't know if it was just me, it felt like they put up more of a fight in this movie versus the other movie. I don't know. I just wanted to point out the beefy Amazons. Yes, sir. Um, next up, I really love the music on this movie. Like I said, oh, not in this movie, not in this video, but the more older I get, the more I notice the background music. And it sets the mood so much. One of my favorite theme songs in, in this movie was every time Wonder Woman did something, she had her own background rock music. And I just love that short little theme that plays whenever Wonder Woman does something super cool. I love the Wonder Woman theme and it's very apparent in this movie. I also liked what they were doing with the relationships, specifically Cyclops, oh my gosh. I know we probably won't ever get that Ray Fisher Cyclops movie, but geez, I love the relationship that we got to see with Cyclops. He was so much more built up in this movie. We got to see his motivations, how he felt inside, his internal turmoil. So much was different for Cyclops in this movie versus the 2017. Like, you could just tell they took everything from his character. There was nothing left of 2017 Cyclops. And that may be why I was never interested in a Cyclops movie. I was like, ah. I watched him in Teen Titans. He was pretty cool in Teen Titans, not Teen Titans Go. The original Teen Titans. But uh, I like Cyclops um, in this movie. We got to see his relationships with his mother, his relationship with his father. He also had a buddy relationship with Barry. Cause I know him and Barry were supposed to be very prominent in the Flash movie. And I could see their friendship building in this movie that we didn't see any of that stuff in 2017. So Cyclops as a character is a completely different character. Him and Stephen Wolf were completely different basically. Um, we got to see so much about them in this movie. One thing that I'm glad they preserved from the 2017, and say what you want about the 2017, I, um, 2017 release, I loved the fight where Superman fought everybody and he whooped their, their butts. Like, there's a lot of debates like, could Flash beat Superman? Could Wonder Woman beat Superman? Not solo, not in this continuity, because he beat everybody on this team. But one of the favorite moments that I have from that movie is when Barry is trying, they're fighting, um, Cyclops is attacking um, Superman, Aquaman's also on Superman, Wonder Woman's on Superman, and the Flash takes off, he's trying to flank him or whatever, and like out the corner of his eye, Superman looks at him. And he's like, what's going on? Like I'm moving super fast and Superman is still able to keep up with him. And then off of that, the Flash was just on the fence. Understandably so, this is a very young Flash. Like this is like his origin story as how he moved from a normal guy with powers to like an actual superhero. This is his so first superhero mission. And I did not really like Ezra Miller's, Miller's Flash in the 2017 release. He was cheesy. I'm glad they removed that scene where he landed on Wonder Woman's boobs. Some of his jokes just fell flat. I understand he's supposed to be a funny character and that's why I love The Flash. Like, no hate from me here. The Flash is my favorite DC hero and Spider-Man is my favorite Marvel hero. But The Flash is right behind me as far, right behind Spider-Man as far as heroes go. And they both have the kind of the same wit in, in battle and stuff like that. And The Flash in 2017, I just didn't mess with it. I didn't, and, and it took me a while for me to grow used to the, the blue lightning. Cause I know in the comics, most of the time he has um, orangish yellow lightning. And even in the Flash TV show, um, he also has orangish red lightning. So the blue, uh, I didn't really like the blue, but it's grown on to me. He's definitely made it his own, her own theme and stuff like that as far as the color lightning. Um, I really like it now. I like him much better as a character. We've got to see Iris West. Oh wow, that was pretty cool. I liked their interaction. I like that car too. Uh, that was a really nice car she was in before, obviously the car got destroyed. But I liked seeing them, they interacted. He, he saved her, she saw his powers and he just like whoop and he disappeared. But like, they were really vibing. Like I've always wanted to vibe with someone like that. Like this is like a love at first sight type scenario where they just made eye contact and they were like, you could just feel the friction in the air. And that was just crazy to me. Um, on top of that, moving on from that, I love the scene where um, Superman goes off to the ship 
and he hears his dad's talking to him. So here he hears John, John Clint, I'm sorry, John Kent, his earth father. We heard, got to hear him talking to them. And then we also heard Jor-El, which is his Kryptonian father. And they were both just ba 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 giving advice and from back to back to back, emphasizing the decision. And we got to see a whole bunch of different suits. A lot of them looked a little steely, a little robotic. And then we also saw the red suit. And then we got to see Superman don that black suit. Man, you thought Batman looked good in black. Superman steals the show. He steals the show with the black suit. It's just sleek, man. I know in the comic books, um, he had the silver bands on. There were silver bands on his wrist. I was really hoping we would get to see that. I also wish they would've briefly gave him the longer hair. I also thought that would've been cool for the look. Um, and on top of that, I would like to have seen him in a more comic accurate black suit with no cape. But what they gave us is still amazing. Like, I know I'm critiquing it, but it's still super cool. And at the end of the movie, when he opens his shirt, you know the Superman thing, he still has the black suit on. So I'm wondering if he's gonna stay with the black suit. But then again, at the end of the movie where we see the nightmare future scene, when Superman shows up, he's wearing blue and red. So I guess eventually he gets over it. On top of, well, since we're already talking about this, I was gonna talk about this later in the video, but since we're on the topic of the nightmare, I just wonder how Batman's getting these visions, these nightmare visions. And I wonder if, it, I wonder if he's doing something where they're trying to lean into Injustice. I don't know if you guys seen Injustice the games. They have Injustice 1, Injustice 2. And then they, it's a comic series where the Joker, um, I think he drugs Superman or he hypnotizes him. And Superman kills Lois Lane and she's pregnant at the time. And this just makes Superman snap. He kills the Joker and basically he just becomes a dark hero. like. He, he takes a whole regime of, of superheroes and he just stomp, stamps justice out throughout the world. And he's, he's a murderer, basically. He's no longer a hero. He just, it breaks Superman. And I'll, with, um, with, in that scene we saw with Darkseid, um, Superman kills him. But before that, we see a skeleton in his arms. And we can tell that that's Lois Lane. Lois Lane is dead. And Superman kills Darkseid. And I think Superman takes over the parademons and everything like that. And he does this regime on Earth, basically. And that's why we have that Misfits, misfits group of heroes um, fighting against Superman. I think they're moving towards an injustice type thing. I don't know if that would look good on cinema, but it's a very bold decision. Um, obviously, I think they're gonna stop it from happening. I think there'll be a movie where they have events going on in the present and events going on in the future and they're just gonna go back and forth. I don't think we'll get a full nightmare movie where everything just takes place in the future. They're just gonna keep doing what they've been doing with the brief clips and stuff like that. When Barry went back in time um, to save them when it, after they failed, also I did like that twist where they failed and Barry had to go back in time. It was good for his development and it was a good twist in the movies. Ever since Thanos won, it, it kind of lost its punch. Um, but I think, I think Justice League came out in before Infinity War. I'm not sure, it came out 2017. I wanna say Justice League came out before Infinity War. So this would have been definitely cool if they had done this before Thanos had done it. That would have been so cool if they had. But since Thanos won, um, we've already seen the trope where the villain wins first and then the heroes fix it. But except for they didn't do a whole movie about it. Like Barry healed himself, that was pretty cool. He does have enhanced healing in the comics, so they didn't pull that out of nowhere. Um, so he does go back in time. I thought he was gonna fall into the future or something like that. Um, and we were gonna get to see the nightmare and then maybe he was gonna go back in time and he goes too far back in time. I don't know. Um, so I'm not sure as far as that goes. But it would have been super cool, but what they did where he entered the Speed Force and he went back in time, that was also super cool. I liked seeing that in the movie. That was super cool. We also got a Ryan Choi name drop um, at the end with Star Lab. Ryan Choi, if you don't know, I believe, I actually forgot to look this up before I started this movie. Ryan Choi is the, um, he's the Adam in the comic book. So that's another superhero that we have that we can add to the Justice League. I'm not a big Adam fan. Um, he's kind of like Ant-Man. He can basically get small and stuff like that. He's super smart. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool. It's actually a good twist because the whole movie, they had him there. But I don't know if I didn't notice his name tag or something like that. I don't know if he had a name tag. 
um, or if they just didn't say his name so it was a bigger reveal at the end. That was super cool how we did that. We also had Martian Manhunter. He was actually introduced pretty early in the movie. I wish he would have got involved in that final fight. We could have definitely used his help. Martian Manhunter is super cool. Like he has telepathy, he can phase through things, he can fly, he has super strength. Um, I don't know if I said shapeshift, but he can shapeshift. Like, he's super strong. We could have definitely used you, bro. You're talking about, like, yeah, I want to help. We could have used your help the other day, man. Where were you? Where were you when we were getting our butts kicked by Steppenwolf, man? We almost died, and now you want to help. Okay. All right, buddy. All right. But, yeah, it's super, it'll be super cool to see Martian Manhunter. I actually like him a lot. His design in the movie I actually don't like too much. But I'm still here for Martian Manhunter. The whole movie I was waiting for a Green Lantern cameo. I know we got this Green Lantern in the beginning of the movie who died. He was there for like 10 seconds. But I was hoping they would have dropped something in there about a Green Lantern in the future. I actually like Green Lantern a lot. I like him and his whole concept of how his powers work. I and say what you want. I like the Ryan Reynolds um the Ryan Reynolds Green Lantern movie. It actually was not that bad to me. I'm waiting for the Green Lantern core movie with anticipation. Um, but besides that, um, those are going to be the main points of what I enjoyed about this movie and what they added. As far as rating this movie, I don't know. It's super good. Like, I can't think of anything that I didn't like in comparison to the 2017 release. Long live the, the Snyder Cut. I hope in the future that they go off of what happened in this movie and what trash transpired in this movie. And I hope it, um, I hope it really takes off so that they use this instead of the old movie because there were a lot of different things that I did not like in that old movie. But as far as that, guys, this is my new favorite DCEU movie. It's, it's amazing. Um, it's way better than the original Justice League. The only thing that I think could compare with this movie is I really like the original Wonder Woman. When I first saw that movie, it was amazing, the first Wonder Woman. And I really liked the direction that they took for uh, Shazam. It wasn't super dark, but it had a very cheesy villain. But, I mean, that movie was really good. Shazam, Wonder Woman, and now the Snyder Cut. We're actually getting some really good DC movies now. Um, I didn't really like Wonder Woman 1984 and... Uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, they have Superman. Um, yeah, that's Batman v Superman. I'm getting started. Um, but I actually haven't seen the extended cut for Batman v Superman. But I hear it's super much better than the original cut. I just haven't been able to get my hands on it. But as far as that goes, I can't think of anything that I didn't like about this movie. It didn't even feel super long to me because I was enjoying it so much. I... If I had to, I'd give this movie like a 10 out of 10. I can't think of anything that I didn't like about this movie. Oh, also, we got the Harley Quinn name drop for you guys who are a big fan of Margie Rob Robbo. I forget her name. You know, the girl who plays, um, the girl who plays Harley Quinn. Apparently she's dead and it's the Joker's fault. We also got the touch of uh, on, on Jason Todd with the Boy Wonder line about Jason Todd who died. I'm glad they actually mentioned that. That means there's a Red Hood somewhere. And I loved the Batman Under the Red Hood um, animated movie. That movie was amazing. But yeah, yeah, well, yeah, Batman, you're not gonna kill the Joker. You've never killed anybody, so. All right, but that's it, guys. Thank you for watching this very long video. If you've gotten this far, you might as well just go ahead and hit the subscribe button. If you wanna talk about the movie down below, feel free to leave a comment. This is Trilogy. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.